Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, the podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Man, I, I just gotta, I gotta share what happened with you today. All right. I gotta right. share what happened with you today. Been please, please me. do. All right. So I got up early. Well, I didn't sleep well last night. It doesn't matter. I got up. And I'm making myself some breakfast. Okay. okay. What you, now? What'd you have for breakfast? Uh, I was. Here's my plan. I'm make a sandwich. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna fry up a ham slice, like a small one. And so two, spam. Nope. And two eggs, and then make an egg ham two sandwich. Two eggs? Yeah. I'm wow. Hungry. I'm hungry when I wake wow. up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Listen, the guy that can't handle a banana uh, for what? breakfast. Okay. <laughs> you talk to me about having two eggs. Who doesn't have two eggs for breakfast? You have one egg. I do. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. No. All right. I do. So I get one egg, mm-hmm. one fried egg, yep. uh, two strips of bacon that Michelle cuts in half so it makes me think I had four. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is this is my this is my morning experience with okay, my life. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So I'm making my stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and uh I'm, I'm in a bit of a mood. Okay. I didn't sleep well. Oh. You experienced my mood this morning. I'm just yeah. I'm in a bit of a mood. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to cook and I'm like, ah, things aren't kind of working out the way. And so Jen's sitting there minding her own business, and I was like, by the way. <laughs> Minding her own business. By the way, <laughs> can we figure out a way to keep the butter in the butter drawer? Because every time I'm cooking something and I need the butter, I want to go for the butter. But all that I all I can ever see in there is margarine and some vegan stuff. I listen, I just need the butter in there. And I'm sure it's oh, wait, I know, but you're talking hold on. Butter in the butter drawer in the fridge. Yeah. And why'd you want the butter? Making eggs. So you take the cold butter and put it in there. Sure. Okay, continue. Anyway. No, a lot of people put they don't, they put their butter. On the counter. Okay, either way, the point is I can't find the butter. It's not where it's supposed to be. Well, if you're, if you're putting it in the fridge, instead of having the, the the spares are supposed to go there. Okay, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't no, even yeah, matter it, it because matter. we're the not spares, spreading it. We're dropping it into a hot pan. It doesn't matter whether it's warm or not. Uh, it does. No, it does. Okay, yes. first of all. Okay, so let me, let me tell, can I tell my story? Yeah, tell your story. Your wrong story about butter so, not on your counter. Okay, listen. I didn't decide where it goes, so take it up with Jen. That's another thing, Jen. <laughs> you should probably be on the counter. All right. <laughs> So like, can we just can we just make sure it's in there because mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure it's the kids. I'm sure it's the kids. Like using I love butter that you did that and not. I'm uh-huh. just I'm not saying you're it's li- you. I know you're a little passive. I'm just saying like, can we stink it? Because I can't. And so she walks over to the refrigerator while I'm cooking with margarine, and she opens the garage. The, oh, what not the garage? She opens what the, the drawer, fridge. the butter drawer. She reaches in and pulls it out. She goes, aha! And there was <laughs> like a big stick of Kerrygold butter in there. <laughs> and she didn't do it like that, actually. She just goes, oh, it's right here. No, I know. I love but the that's sto- how. But no. that's how it felt. Oh, she was, she like, was like, victory! Yeah, in your face! <laughs> and then I was, th- but now I'm mad at her. Wait, for why? Because show- she, because she, she showed me that the butter was in, she put it in my hold on, face. Hold on, She Let put me it in my way. face. You were mad at her because you essentially passively accused her of not putting it in the right spot. And then she shows you it was in the right spot after yeah. you're in your little yeah. mood. I don't, don't. And so you're upset that yep. she. I don't hold that. I was like, that, that, okay, but thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was the worst husband, biggest jerk. Oh, you're not the worst husband. <sighs> no, Joey, Joey. This, well, not at this table. But the point <gasps> is, the point is, is that uh, I was a failure today. Take it back. I take it back. You know, Thank I don't. You. I always tell you that you're a good husband. I know. You're See? a good podcast See? wife. I'm, I'm, just you're a good husband I'm a good husband. Wife. I'm a good husband at so, home. And yeah, on that the was podcast. my morning. That was my morning. And uh, I was not a I was not a thankful, mm. peaceful, prayed up husband this morning. Mm. I was barely Christian. And uh, I when a, I go home, I have to apologize. Yeah, That's you, what I gotta you do. should. Yeah. You should. <sighs> Man, I had a great morning. And what'd you do this morning? Nothing. Did you have an egg and a banana? And bacon. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. I did have egg and sausage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, tell you know what, you know what I am thankful for, and I'm, it's easy to be thankful for. Here it comes all access members. Yes. Big thanks to everybody My who was subscribing. A bunch of thank you, you for have jumped on. Thank you for supporting the podcast in that way. Means a lot. So many of you have asked, how can we support the podcast? And you know, we just we didn't want to have people donating randomly. We wanted mm. to produce something yeah. special for people that wanted. We want to wanted support. somehow give a thank you in the midst of that. Yeah. And so, it's easy for us just to put out a couple more. I mean, well, I mean, come on, guys. It's, it's it, twenty. It's twenty four extra. It would a be month. easy if we just did one extra a week, but we're doing a lot. We're doing but six we're, extra, but we're do we're able to do it within our allotted time commitments outside mm-hmm. of church and family to mm-hmm. get it done, and it's working, and we're really excited to see what happens this year. So, oh, also, Jimmy, oh, uh, just just let everybody know, just to remind you guys, okay, 
pay attention next week because we're <gasps> gonna yes. be our 500th episode 500th episode we're gonna be doing a giveaway big one big one now mm. we kind of teased it mm. uh on monday yep about the puritan set puritan box set which is basically they're taking those puritan paperbacks and they're putting them in hardcover cloth bound yeah uh volumes it looks good i'm gonna get it why because, won't they give it to us because it's expensive. wait you're gonna get it i'm gonna buy it yeah book budget don't i don't do i have a book budget no maybe uh i don't have a book budget maybe can i use a conference budget do you have a conference line item? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. We need to bump up your hours anyways because <laughs> <laughs> anyways. you need to be doing more stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I know yeah, you're and yeah, you're yeah, actually yeah. starting to do more stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. No, I do I think I've I do have a conference budget. Okay, good. I just never know. use it. Yeah. Well, if you want to play fast and loose with the church budget like James McDonald, then go ahead and do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I have my own conference? <gasps> can I pay myself for a one man, one day conference? You could put on your own conference. I'm going to put on my own conference, a self reflective conference. Yeah, I like this. I, and I'm probably going to need uh, the Puritan box set mm -hmm. to go over. You, you, go could do, you could ask if you can, can I do a giveaway at that conference? <laughs> can I do a giveaway at my one man conference. <laughs> and then you give it to yourself. <laughs> I like this. This is good. All right. So I was angry this morning, Jimmy. And you feel better now? No. You, you took it out on me a little bit. I did. You did. Listen, you got a dusting of my anger. It's fine. But you were angry. And so I was, it, I was in a bad it got you thinking. We got to talk about anger here. And we've, we've, we've been kind of talking about some of this stuff, you know, anger, um, you know, off air. And so we, we thought, let's talk about anger on air and maybe, maybe press into it a little bit more deeply than most Christians do. I like that. Yeah. Because a lot of Christians, most Christians, virtually all Christians that I know, they have a lot to say about anger. They've heard a lot of preaching on anger, but it's usually one note. What's that note? Uh, your anger is not righteous. Yeah. Don't be angry. Don't be angry. Stop that. Yeah. Which is generally good advice. Yeah. Because the scripture does tell us that we should avoid anger. Like uh, Psalm 37, 6, refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. And it's a good word. Mm. Ephesians 4, 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. It's a, that's reflected again in Colossians 3, 8. Put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Mm. So the Bible does have a lot to say about anger. And maybe the dominant note is avoid it right Be, but but why what yeah why is there this careful and persistent call to avoid anger well because much if not all or most of our anger is rooted or, or rooted in and maybe originates from pride when our pride's yeah, hurt sure. when we're upset when mm -hmm. we're not when we're not the person when i'm being inconvenienced when I'm being inconvenienced and the butter is, is not, not in, in the, the drawer, drawer, which is the wrong place anyways, <laughs> should be on the counter. Or even think like when you're driving, when you're thinking like, hey, I have the right of way. Yeah. I've got somewhere to be. Mm -hmm. I'm in very important person. Yep. Uh, everyone should be moving out of my way. Yep. And why is this guy in the left lane yep. when it's supposed to be you stay in the right, left yep. to pass? And he's on his phone. And they're on their phone. Yeah. And mm -hmm. excuse me. Nowadays, how is your phone not going through your, your car anyways? Well, not everybody has an Audi, Jimmy. <laughs> it's not just for Audis, Joe. Oh, I know. My, my busted up Hyundai Thank has you. it. Exactly. <laughs> so it plugs right in. And it doesn't even have to. It can be wireless. And just, you still can do it. <laughs> but no, but it, it yeah, originates it from pride, right? Like, Absolutely. It, it, that, that I am being inconvenienced or maybe uh, you've hurt my feelings in some way, right? Like right. you made me look foolish yep. or, or you didn't think much of me yep. or, uh, yeah. Anger also leads to a, a loss of self-control. We see this. I mean, we know this. Yeah. You get angry. You start talking. Yeah. You start popping up. Or you mm -hmm. start punching people. Or you start setting houses on fire. Well, uh, or, I, mean, I don't know. Whatever. People do different things. <laughs> okay. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, it leads to it because like it takes over. It's very easy for uh, the anger that you have, even if it is originally just, that can take over mm. and, um, and lead to a, a complete loss of self-control. And part of that self-control, I think, is, is there's a diminish of, of one's love for one another, right? Mm. People that you have been, uh, like if you feel like, you're angry at mm -hmm. right uh you tend to maybe love them less you you tend to maybe maybe uh, care less for them maybe? sure you're not uh, thinking about their you're not well thinking about them yeah yeah uh and even in your thoughts and and in your heart um 
that friend now becomes like this enemy that you have this animosity with, mm -hmm. right? You, you, you think, or you might even mutter under about stupid person's an idiot. Person, just, you know, you start muttering, yeah, you start, yeah. you, and obviously there's no love in that. And, and we're called to avoid anger because it does oftentimes lead to vengeance. And the scripture is very clear on this. Like, don't let, let the Lord handle justice here and, yeah. and vengeance. Leave that to him. Yeah, no punisher. Right. Oh, yeah. Ugh, I got you there. Just, as much I as I don't like Marvel, there. Mm -hmm. Punisher is a pretty cool character. Yeah, I, uh, I quite enjoyed those comics as a kid. I remember I was introduced to comics by, uh, by a wrestler. It was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, but he was super geeky. And it's in the eighties, mm. right? When it wasn't cool to be geeky, like comics were not cool, but he was deep in the weeds and these guys, he was into metal and all this stuff, but he liked comics and he was, he was showing Punisher and they'd never really, didn't really know. And so he's unpacking the Punisher for me, walking me through it. And I was like, yeah, I like this guy. Yeah. He's just killing everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> all the bad guys. It's dark. It's gritty. And it appeals, right? It appeals to this, this, this mm. indignation that we have for, for unrighteousness in the land. So let's talk about that. We're supposed to avoid anger because of its potential dangers and because it is oftentimes originating from sin itself in our lives. Yeah. But we do believe there's a place for righteous anger. There is a place for anger in the life of a Christian, a Christ follower. Uh, but before we get into that, we probably need to define it. Mm, how would you define it? Uh, well, I would define it as a state of disturbing and energizing passion okay. in which strong negative emotion is triggered by a perception of wrong done to oneself or others or both. That's that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's what I would define. That's it. how you would define mm -hmm. it. I'm pretty sure I've read that in uh, Packer's Anger in the New Dictionary of Biblical Theology. Yeah, but, but that's why I would define it that way because pa Packer defined it that way first. Oh, so gotcha. that's okay. I would, so, I'm so not he, saying it's originally <laughs> mine. <laughs> You're just saying that's saying, how you would that's define how it. I would define it if you ask me. I would quote J.I. Packer. <laughs> Anger is a passionate response to a real wrong yeah. or perceived wrong, right? That's what it yeah. is. And that means that uh, it can be good or bad. It can, mm. it, it can come from a good place or a bad place. It can produce good things or bad things. And so, so when we're talking about that, anger is good then. Like then you're saying... Some would talk about like righteous anger mm -hmm. is that response then as we're talking about like that, that response to indignation to to wickedness, right? Like right. the standing up against uh, maybe, you know, injustice in the world. Yeah. Uh, where do we see that? We, there are examples of this in scripture. You you see it in, in, in Jacob, uh, like in Genesis 31. Moses, you see Moses righteously mm, angry at different yeah. times, like uh, in, in Exodus. Golden calf and all that fun stuff. Right. And then uh, in Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah five, uh, Nehemiah thirteen, just 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 Nehemiah. <laughs> so there, we do have examples of good men, of godly men, yeah. God fearing men who are righteously anger, and it does manifest itself in specific, contextually appropriate ways. We even see this in Jesus, and everybody knows mm. this. When you start talking about anger, like, well, Jesus got mad. And sometimes that's what some people will use to excuse their anger. Yeah. Well, Jesus like drove out the, the money changers. Yeah, I mean, he flipped table. It's time to flip some tables. He got the whip out. He started whipping it's time people. time to whip it good. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Is that Devo? Yeah. Yeah, it's Devo. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's, that's my generation. When the Jesus comes along, he will whip it. <laughs> whip it. <laughs> whip it good. <laughs> yeah. So like we read about this in um, Mark 3. Mm. Again, Jesus entered the synagogue and a man was there with a withered hand and they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with a withered hand, come here. And he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. Mm, they knew what, better. That's what Jesus does. <laughs> they knew he, better. He shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. And he looked around at them with anger grieved at their hardness of heart and said yeah. to them stretch said to the man stretch out your hand he stretched it out and his hand was restored i love that passage yeah because jesus is angry with this ungodliness that puts people at risk yeah he's yeah. angry because religious leaders and these these religious zealots who are supposed to be about the glory of god and and the love of their neighbors are demonstrating that they don't care about either and so he's angry with them. He's grieved at the consequences. And his response 
was to essentially shame them by healing the man. And really the, his, his priority was to be compassionate and to heal someone in need. Mm. And in doing so, he does heap shame on these people. You know, so we see Jesus' anger in a, in, in a couple of different contexts, right? Obviously driving out the, the money changers mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm. as well. So clearly there's a place for anger. We see it in, in the people of God, righteously exemplified at times. Yeah. We see it in Jesus' life. Well, we see God's anger too, right? Exodus 34, yeah. 6 to 7. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. So mm. we see that Jesus is, or not Jesus, sorry, God is slow to anger, right? He's yep. Uh, God that's merciful and gracious, slow to anger. But that doesn't mean he's a pushover. Right. That and doesn't mean he will forget. That doesn't mean he will allow that injustice to continue or the, iniqu the iniquity to go uh, unpunished. He right? doesn't say no to anger. He says slow, slow to, to anger. anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Write that down. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, so really, it, it's simultaneously comforting and like encouraging but also scary. Yeah. He's like uh, slow mm -hmm. emphasis on emphasis on slow. That's comfort. He's slow to anger. He's patient with us, but he's slow to anger. We put the emphasis on anger. You're like, Oh geez. I, his patience does wear out. Yeah. Like that sin that you're doing and thinking you're getting away with and yeah. that God is maybe giving you a free pass. Mm -hmm. Slow to anger. Yeah. It's not free. <laughs> there ain't no free pass there. You've got a temporal temporary pass. Mm -hmm. It's not even a pass. He's just being patient with you, right? And you will. He's giving you the uh, the gracious opportunity to repent That's and exactly to turn. Right. That's exactly right. And at some point, we don't think that the way. hammer we comes like, down. I got away with it again. He must be fine with it. Yeah. Or, or, or he's, he's, he's busy. Just, he doesn't care. He's like, he's fine. He's, he's nice. It's not really a big deal. Yeah, I can you know, just like, continue you know, something like this. Obviously, it was a big deal. He would, he would say something. Well, he did. <laughs> well, if it was a big deal, he would do something. Well, he will. <laughs> uh, I mean, this whole idea that you're well, and seeing, he did. He he paid the penalty for that sin, right? That should grieve us even more, yeah. Because Jesus suffers all of God's anger against sin mm -hmm. uh, on the cross. Even in Romans one eight, speaking about God's anger or wrath, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who, by their unrighteousness, suppress the truth. So, God gets angry, mm -hmm. and it's good and righteous. Jesus got angry, good, good and, righteous. and righteous. We have examples of men like Jacob, Moses, and Nehemiah, and there was a good and righteous anger on their part. Now, most of the exhortations in Scripture regarding anger emphasize be slow to get there. That's the, the yeah. predominant. When I at least I, I could be wrong here, but my reading, and I've spent the last week going over a lot of these passages. The if it seems to me that the bulk of references to anger. Don't say just don't get angry, but be slow to get angry. Like Proverbs 16, 32. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So here you have the concept of being patient, uh, not being quick-tempered, ruling your spirit, controlling being, yourself. Yeah, being self-controlled. So important. We think like, well, I'm just going just gonna to let go and let God. Okay, well, if you even can mean that in a good way, Letting go and letting God means that you must control your own passions mm -hmm. be, to mm -hmm. let God do his thing. Yeah. If you're going to yeah. let God be the God of vengeance, then you have to control yourself. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7, 9. Be not quick in your spirit to become angry, for anger lodges in the bosom of fools. Like that banana lodged in your belly. Why? Stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I've been thinking about that banana belly. Why you do that? Just stop. Oh, let man. me be. Hashtag here. banana boy. Stop it. Uh, but yeah, be not quick in your spirit to become angry because it, it, it lodges in the bosom of fools, right? Like, what's that mean? What do you think that means? Well, I think what it means is uh, the foolish man is quick to be angry. The foolish man is not patient. The foolish man is not slow to anger. Uh, the foolish man pops off mm -hmm. at a moment's notice and is not controlled, as we saw in Proverbs uh, 16, right? There's yeah. no self-control within them. And so I think, you know, a foolish man has no discipline and anger, popping off angry uh, and not being slow to it is a sign of that lack of self-control. Yeah. It, it, amen. And he, 
I know this. You know, people call me the angry dwarf. No, no, Joe, no. Yeah. Yeah, we just—it's just a—it's just a funny say. Yeah, know? it's just a domain name that he had pointed to my blog for years. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, I, listen, I—I I have all of my life wrestled with, or indulged in, mm -hmm. or fought against anger, and my experience is that it does lodge in the bosom. In other words, once you give into it, it's—it's it's hard to extricate. It's in there. Mm. It sticks, right? I was, as a kid, uh, I was, I was violent. I was, my anger led led to violence. It led to uh, all kinds of problems. And then, as a Christian, it led the violence stopped, except for one time when this guy hit me on the top of my head at Moody. Uh, that got physical. But anyways, um, he shouldn't <laughs> hit me on the top of my head without cause. That was not okay. Yeah. Um, I do it, but I always have but cause. You never have hit me on the top of my head. Yes, I have. Because your little tiny T-Rex arms can't even reach the top of my head. Uh, you have the shorter arms than I do. Uh, yeah. no, I, no, yes, that's not do. true. Oh, we're going to measure them. We're we not. will measure we're, our we're arms. We're measuring you want arms. A slap box? Yeah. <laughs> slap box. So, um, and so I, I've seen this. So even as a Christian then, it led to outbursts. And it, it, it's taken years of, of God's sanctifying grace and learning from more mature godly people mm -hmm. to see where my anger comes from. Uh, pride, fundamentally, self-centeredness, uh, egoism, selfism, meism. Mm -hmm. It was. It, it stems from that, and it winds up hurting other people. Even if you're not violent, it hurts other people, and it sticks in. So, I. It's. It, and now, my anger manifests itself primarily in uh, complaint, which is still <laughs> wrong. It's still wrong, and my complaint grieves me now even more than my violent outbursts of, of the past because now mm. I know better. Mm. Um, so James 1, 19 and 20, know this, my beloved brothers, this is a famous passage. You guys all know this. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So the reason we are called to be slow to anger is because it can and so often does come from the wrong place and it leads to wrong actions. It's pretty simple. And I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. I mean, anger can be good or bad. What we need to do is we need to learn, and this is where I think the church is largely silent. We need to learn what to do with good anger. When you are righteously angry, yeah. when somebody steals from you, or when somebody hurts your mm -hmm. kid, um, when you are injured or wronged and you have a sense of righteous anger, what do you do with that feeling of anger? What do you do with that anger as it's coming about? We've got a few thoughts here for you guys, just three that we think will be helpful. Yeah, first, I mean, evaluate your anger. Like, So you got to ask the question, what has brought about this anger yeah. you know am i being uh overly sensitive probably <sighs> not you i'm saying in general no People. you're no you're nope. pretty quick no nope. uh, i was like yeah probably anyways yeah. am am is one being overly sensitive is joe being uh maybe too proud check <laughs> am i being embarrassed uh, Check. has, uh, am I feeling guilty or maybe I was caught? Oh man, yeah. that'll trigger somebody. That'll, right? trigger, that'll trigger us. That'll, that triggers me. Yeah. Here's the butter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then honestly, like for me, probably the biggest one is being inconvenienced. Yeah. Right. Like, Hey, Especially my time when you're doing the right thing. Yeah. When you're doing the right thing and somebody else is inconveniencing you by not doing the right thing, it's easy to let that go. But sometimes, um, we look at our anger and it's, just ask yourself, am I being petty here? Am mm. I making a mountain out of a mohill? Yeah. Okay. This is the one thing the general will say to me all the time. Cause like I'll start talking about the person driving stupid and she'll say, you know, maybe they're, um, maybe they just don't know. Maybe they're not trying to inconvenience you. Maybe it's an accident. Maybe, maybe, uh, they're having a problem. Yeah. Maybe they're having a really bad day. Uh, maybe there's a crisis. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm being petty cause I don't even know the, the full circumstances. Mm. So, okay, so you want to ask, you know, what has brought it about? Yep. Um, yeah. Are you overly sensitive so, or whatever? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, then you really have to ask yourself, okay, is my indignation righteous? Yeah. Right? Like, is is, is this warranted? Uh, That's not a quick question to answer, is it? No, it's not. And it's not one I think that you can really answer on your own all the time. I, I think, think it's really good. important to seek counsel and, and talk to a friend. Right? Yep. So there's times when I've been like upset and I've gone to Joe and said, man, I'm. I'm upset about this. Yeah. Like, 
what do you, and sometimes you'll be like, yeah, you're being a baby. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Thanks. Uh, I just need you to hear me and let me vent a little bit and then tell me I'm a baby. But then other times I'm like, let's go hurt them. You've never said that. <laughs> You've never said that. No, no, no. No, but there have been times I'm like, no, uh, I, no, no, I think probably the most quote unquote righteousness in my anger uh, has been, you've said things like, uh, yeah, they've, that was wrong, but you're, you're still overreacting. And there's a better way yeah, to handle happen, yeah. that, right? Uh, and I think that's probably most often is, uh, yeah, there's some truth to it, but you're definitely handling it incorrectly. Right. And I, part of that, I think, is helped when you direct your anger, right? So you got to evaluate your anger, number one. Number two, got to direct your anger. Make sure that your anger is directed toward the right person or the right institution mm. or the right occurrence, because sometimes you might have a righteous anger, but you take it out on the wrong person or the wrong thing. Yeah, that's yeah, good. And this yeah. is oftentimes yeah, 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 yeah. just ignorance of the full picture. Uh, you're letting your emotional state, which isn't necessarily bad, uh, you know, wreak havoc on someone who didn't have much to do with it. And so you, mm. this, is why, this is why it's so important to be slow to anger because it takes time to evaluate. It takes time to decide like, okay, so where should I be directing this energy? Yeah so that something good can actually come about. Yeah. I, here's probably the one I, I struggle with the most is measuring then my response, right? Like, mm -hmm. like your response, it, there has to be a proportional because I'm kind of that guy that's like, oh, you wronged me. I'll make here. Yeah. I'm about to drop the nuke. You'll yeah. never do it again. Yeah. You know? Uh, and so learning, okay, I need to measure my response here. So I got to ask those questions. Uh, what is my goal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, rebuke should be a means to an end. That means, you know, like there should be some sort of correction and reconciliation in the midst of it. You're not just, you're just going, venting. You're not just venting to and, and to trying to hurt them, mm -hmm. right? There's there's uh, a sense there where you're trying to bring about change, right? right. And that correction should aim to, to, to be a change in them. Uh, and ultimately, we want to be pointing them to truth, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not just about my proclamation of their wrong, yep. but it's about helping them, correcting them, and, and encouraging them uh, to follow after God's ways. Yeah, that's helpful because I think we'll go as far as, okay, I'm angry. This thing happened to me. Uh, I need to let them know that they screwed up and we light them up. But that's- That's it. That, that's Listen, that is in maybe that- and I mean, let's take that in the best possible way, lighting them up. You, you, you rebuke them. That's what I mean. Uh, but like you said, that's not the end. Like that's a means to the end. And I, so I like that you said, you know, your proclamation mm -hmm. of it is, uh, is a part of, of getting to the right place. And this is where I think, and, and this is a, a different topic here, Joe, right? But we've talked about this in the past. Uh, this is where I think a lot of churches go wrong in church discipline. Yeah, right. Totally. Is there? It's it's a lot of rebuking, but not restoring. Right. Yep. There's not the goal, uh, or at least it, it, it's they maybe they have the goal of restoration, but they just have not charted the path to get there. That oftentimes that's the case, right? right. And some of them, they, some of them function as if the goal is punishment. I'm going. It's I'm going to make you pay. Yeah. Instead of it being, you know, uh, restorative, like yeah. you said, it's, it, it, we, church discipline is, is a mess in evangelicalism. Either it's not done at all on one extreme yeah. or it's, uh, it's done poorly and people get hurt unnecessarily in it. So I think also when you're talking about measuring your response, because often if I'm angry with myself hmm. justifiably, like I'm righteously yeah. angry with my own shortcomings. And when that happens, I need to channel that anger. Like channeling anger, and you'll you'll hear hmm. you'll hear like the dark side. I was like, channel your use your anger, uh, <laughs> you know. But what I'm saying is, is righteous anger should be used well. Channel your anger against yourself, and let it be the spark that lights the flame of repentance hmm. and spiritual self discipline. Like we need to use it as the opportunity to take control of our lives. I've been reckless. I've been careless. I've been insensitive. I've been lazy. Um, I've been blame shifting. Okay, so be angry with yourself hmm. and let that fuel repentance. And for those of you that maybe are angry with a friend or, or a family member, listen, don't avoid, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, don't yeah. avoid, it, let them know. Yeah. You need to talk this out because we, you need to have that uh, restoration. You can't let it brood underneath because at some point it's going to blow up into something. Mm -hmm. that, like you mentioned before, making a mountain out of a molehill, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
and really, I, I find anyways, uh, being able to have those honest conversations with people uh, and discussing these things directly, I find that it strengthens our relationship. Totally does, especially if you come at it in faith yeah. with, with a righteous indignation that is characterized by real love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Good stuff. I, I'm encouraged by this, so now I know I can be angry all that I want. All, all that that's you want. The, is that, is that, I think that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line, Joe. You can do whatever you want with your anger. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DrDevotion.com. They can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast. Head up to the store, JoeFoStore.com and grab some gear. We got some all access content out there, some exclusive content for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to head out over Head on over to DrDevotion.com slash all access. And Daily sign devotions up. over Daily there. Daily devotions, banter of truth. Every Tuesday. Uh, Joe, it's $10 a month. Even less if you do the year all at once. Boom. That that to me is amazing. So, I mean, uh, and it's, I know that that's a sacrifice that you guys make for extra content and you want to support the podcast, but it helps us to do what we're doing and to do more. And we really do want God to allow us to do more because we want to encourage the church. Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday, uh, exclusive content throughout the week. Blog posts are over on the website as well as some video content. Later.